actually what you did going to the street is kind of buddha like i don't know if you were inspired or it just happens to be but you know one of his ways was going from riches uh, right. saying screw this i'm not really connecting with the people i need to, to go feel this out mm -hmm. so he goes to the street yep and and the story goes um you know a little more uh a longer version of that, but generally speaking, you did something similar. Not to compare you uncomfortably to a Buddha, that's not what I mean to do. Right. <laughs> but I think there's a lot of value in that. Um, how, yeah. how would you sum up your experiences of uh, you know learning from from the streets? If you well, will? In the, there was a lot to learn, and especially when you're there, you're on the street. I mean, literally, no exaggeration, sleeping on concrete every single night. Mm. And I had gotten uh, a sleeping bag, so I had that. And then I hid that every day, so I didn't have to carry it around. And, um, you know, so many people think that, oh, it's all just drug addicts on the street, and it's not. All right, is there drug addiction on the street? Yes. Is there mental illness on the street? Yeah. And then there are people that aren't either. What's and that then, movie that just came out about something like this? There's some documentary my girlfriend was just telling me about on, was it Netflix or something? She literally just told me a day or two ago. Yeah, as you as you're talking, I'm gonna look it up because this is super interesting. I'm gonna leave a link, and um, it's going to what you're saying. It's not just a bunch of uh, you know criminals and right, you know, crackheads. Right. There's actual normal people. Yeah, there are living out in the street. Yeah, there are, and I have to tell you, one of the things for me is that there's a definitely a sense of freedom when you're living fully inside the grid, but you're completely off the grid. It's it's a weird thing. It is a weird thing. I'm and telling you. Why is it like uh, exploding right now? Well, I think you know, rich getting richer, poor getting poorer, that mm. whole thing, and it's happening in wealthy areas, you know, such as you know the coasts, and uh, it's it's tragic though, you know. But yet, and I don't. That's one thing that I really try to stay away from commenting on, right? Only because. Even though I've lived on the streets, was homeless, worked with the homeless, worked and counseled the people who counseled the homeless and worked with the homeless, it's like the thing that, to me, it's, it's, it's like trying to resolve, it's like, it would be like me trying to resolve the Pal Palestinian-Israeli conflict. Oh, yeah. I totally feel you on that, and I agree 100%. It's, it's just like, too complicated. I, I, too, I can't touch it. It's just like, I can do... I'm the, from there, and I don't touch it. I know, it. I know. And it's just like... I can do the interaction on the one-on-one, -on -one, but the notion of at the theoretical level or at the policy level, that's for brains bigger than mine. Uh, Cause it's, it's not a simple equation. No. And a lot of people I'll don't want to live in, no, I, I shouldn't say a lot. There are those that don't want to live in some sort of dwelling that there, I'm telling you, there is freedom uh, for some people in living on the street. And it was very liberating for me. There were times when it was scary. I was blessed. I'm a big guy. But I was still, there were a couple of times. Um, Where you were challenged. <laughs> oh, yeah. There was one. I, I was just telling this story to a friend of mine uh, just this last weekend where uh, the particular spot where I slept, uh, it was next to a building, but it wasn't on the sidewalk because in the city where I was at the time, Berkeley uh, and Oakland, uh, you're not allowed to sleep on the sidewalk, but you can sleep in the entryway of a business or something like that. And I was sleeping in the back of the business. And there was a sidewalk that went up into a residential area. And I'm, I, I'm awakened in the, middle of the night by, in the middle of the night by a crash. I hear glass. And I look up the fucking street. And I see somebody's doing a smash and grab, right? They smash yeah. the window. They're trying to grab something out of the car that might be in it. And then I see the guy. He's on a bicycle. And he's coming towards me. And dopey as it sounds, it's like, Hey, motherfucker, this is my neighborhood. Yo. Right? <laughs> Even though probably everyone in the neighborhood wants me out of their neighborhood. Anyway, so he's coming down on his fucking bike. He doesn't see me. And I stand up and I fucking lay my forearm right Boom. into his upper chest and then I slid up his throat. He goes ass over tea kettle. His bike goes off that way. He didn't like that, I'm sure. No, and he gets up and he's got a backpack on <laughs> oh, and he's swinging his backpack at me. And I'm like, either he's got some giant fucking history book in there or there's something in there. And he hits me with it and it fucking hits my arm. And I'm like, fine. You know, I used to play football. Also, it's like fine, it hurt, but it's like whatever. But in his, in sort of the follow through, something goes flying out of the backpack <laughs> and hits the street and goes, Ksh! it was his 1.75 liter bottle of vodka. And oh, he goes over shit. and he's down in the street and he's wasted. I can see now he's wasted. And he's like picking up the little pieces like he just <laughs> lost his dear friend who died in the war. <laughs> So yeah, there were a few instances, some funny, some scary, but oh, um, otherwise, no, it was 
what I learned from the experience is even among, and this is, this is something I really attribute to uh, my parents, particularly my father, he could find the good in anyone. Mm. And even among the ones who were, uh, you know, addicts or just full of pain that there's, there's good in everyone and you can focus on it or not. And I'm not saying we ignore problems, et cetera, but my job is to bring love to people and to engage them in conversation. And maybe that conversation allows them to talk about something that's hard to talk about and get right. some of that pain out. And so I guess what I would, what I experience on the street is what you experience anywhere else. And sometimes in more passionate ways. And, and what I experienced was the beauty of humanity. I, I want to tell you one teeny little story. Do please. When I first got on the street, um, I didn't know all the rules. And uh, oh I yeah, there's sleep. the the street code. Well, there there are, and then, and then there's city code again. Don't sleep on the sidewalk. <laughs> yeah, okay. There and, few, uh, so there few was rulers to abide by. Exactly. And uh, so in the particular area where I was, I was just a couple blocks from UC Berkeley, and uh, there was a street, two way street, and then there was a little stretch of grass, and then there was the sidewalk, and. I'm asleep one night, and in that area, you're roughly safe because the students are generally college students are, you know, they're not assholes, you know. I mean, they, they it's a homeless, you know, if they have some measure of compassion, whatever, sure. with, with exceptions, of course. And, but I was laying there one night, and it, was, it had to have been like two in the morning, and it's quiet, and I'm, I'm sleeping, and I'm awakened by somebody clearly a block away singing loudly. And you can t and you hear a few other voices, and I was able to determine. So they're up the street from me a bit. That it's two guys and a and a female, and they're singing loudly and they're talking loudly, and they're obviously coming home from the bar, right? And they're and then I hear out of two sides, the one guy and the woman were in the street still, and one guy was up on the sidewalk. Okay. Okay. And I'm still just laying low in my side in my sleeping bag. I don't detect danger um, because they're they're so drunk and whatever. And I'd sort of eyed them from a distance. They didn't look big, so it's just like you know I just ride it out. And I'm laying there and I'm sort of turned away from the sidewalk, whatever. And the loud one was on the sidewalk singing and all this, and he gets within like a foot of me. No, let's say a few feet of me, and he stops singing. Oh, so and he's thinking about something. Well, I have an idea. Let's fuck with the homeless person. Hold on. And he, the guy and the, the female are just chitty chatting. So they, they're in their own thing. And they may have been a little further back or a little further up. But the, the, out of your shot of him. Hmm. He stops singing. He's still walking. And under his breath, not able to see my face because I'm turned away from the sidewalk. Under his breath, very quietly, he said, God bless you, my friend. Wow. God bless you. And kept walking. Nobody heard him say that. He didn't even know I would hear him say that. So in Took other words. Took me by surprise. I, what's that? Took me by surprise. I was expecting some um, kick, exactly. kick the homeless person. Exactly. And, and so it's a testament. To, I heard a person's personal prayer with God hmm. directed towards me. This kid was drunk. Off his ass. Singing and screaming and all that shit. And he quiets his soul for five seconds. Mm. I, I didn't do anything. I was just, oh Whoa. shit. I was just laying there. <laughs> I was just laying there. And he offers a prayer to God on my behalf. And it's just like, wow, a college kid. Just, just like that. Humbling. Humbling. So the, there's decency in humanity. I mean, you were expecting uh, an oh shit sort of story. That's the sad thing that I am. Well, and that's okay. And we all would in that situation. Uh, but th so the beauty of humanity, that there's good everywhere, but also now the flip side of that is there's pain everywhere. So, so many people said, well, Sven, you were working with wall street types and then you're, you're working on the street and then you're back to working with wall street types and academics and athletes and so forth. How do you justify doing that? And how do you justify charging the rate that you charge and so forth? You know, when they have it so easy, they have so much money. It's like, you don't get it. <laughs> there's so much pain. There's just as much pain at the top as there is at the bottom. Sure. And, and people say, well, you got money. That can make your pain go away. That's just, this, it's so naive. It is. It's so naive. Mm -hmm. And and so uh, the other side of it and part of why I, and I still do a lot of pro bono stuff. I get thousands of people reaching out to me week to week, month to month. That's and, awesome. And 
my girlfriend's always teasing me. She's like, Sven, you do more free work than you do paid work. You know, you're working 24 seven and so forth and I enjoy it and I feel obligated in a good way, not like, um, but there's pain at the top. And it's funny because she heard someone, uh, TikTok, I'm sure, uh, saying recently, you know, I am literally the um, counselor to the people like succession, mm. you know, Trumps and so, and he, not specifically the Trumps, but the wealthy of the wealthy or some of the Redstone family or the yeah. Murdoch family. Or, and, and those are the type of people I service as well. And this guy said flat out, they are as depraved as you see on succession. They are as empty. They are as pain filled at the top. And it's a think, good representation. I like that show. I love that show. Okay. And so here's the thing though. If we don't heal them, the fallout from them have an empty soul is profound. Sure. You change that life though. And the, the downward flow. That's how it works. Yeah. I mean, they in the, the military, bigger... we always used to say shit rolls downhill. Yeah. They got the bigger stick. <laughs>